and it's time to buckle up for a new episode of Raise Nation Radio, the one and only podcast made to inspire fundraisers like you to continue making impacts in our community and building better tomorrows exchange and exchanging ideas. So whether you're a trailblazer or seasoned pro, you'll pick up the trends that transform your fundraising. And together, we'll dive into lively conversations and chat with industry-leading fundraisers and thought leaders to explore hot-button issues and innovative ideas. So stay with us for the next 30 minutes while we inspire you to embrace the future of fundraising. All right, let's get going. Welcome back to Raise Nation Radio. Um, If you've been with us before, so glad to see you again. We are about 80 episodes strong now, and you can find us on all your favorite podcast channels. If you're new, thank you for joining. We have a great show planned for you today. I'm super excited to um, introduce a trifecta of powerful women, um, specific in the you know, Indiana, Indianapolis market, I had the pleasure of actually attending one of their expos. And I was just so inspired and charged and empowered when I left that I was like, all right, I got to get you on Raise Nation Radio because we have to share all of this great stuff. I hear them chuckling in the background, but we're going to talk just so much about what they do for women. We're, we're talking about the Indie Women in Tech uh, powerhouse. And they're just doing so many m- amazing things for women, um, for tech, the tech community, and for uh, Indianapolis. And it's really my pleasure. Who do we have here? We have Jessa McGinn. She's got the whole marketing communications um, under her belt. We have Ariel Crawley, who's community engagement. And we have Kristen Russell, who plans a lot of great events, The one, like the one I attended to. So we have a powerhouse of women that's just going to talk about all great things for women, for tech, and for Indie. So ladies, welcome to Raise Nation Radio. I'm so excited to have you with us today. How y'all doing? Good. Good. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, it's so great to have you here. So um, I, I, I want to just talk, I first congratulate you about the Empower Indie Expo. Um Thank you so much for inviting me. I walked in and I was like, whoa, there were so many powerful women that were um, welcoming me and empowering me. You had great sessions. I attended the uh, personal branding. You had um, vendors that people could talk to and resume writing and headshots over here. And it, it was just like a buffet of, you know, <laughs> let me be a better, stronger, more powerful woman. Congratulations. Tell me about the conference. How did it go from my perspective? Bravo. But um, who wants to take that first and tell me about all the great things from the expo? Sure, I will. Um To begin with, we wanted to create a sort of event that was very accessible. So we did make it a free event for attendees, but we wanted it to be well-rounded so that they could come and seek the resources that they really needed, whether that be a professional headshot, a resume building from um, different professionals in the area in HR and tech. And we also wanted to include um, a good amount of resource as well as hiring tech company organizations to join us and as well as workshops and a panel of powerhouse women in our community. And I would say it was a huge success. We had numerous women walk away with job offers. (gasps) We had numerous women sign up for either resource organizations where they're going to get mentored or possibly even mentor younger girls. We had compliments about every single workshop, about the things that they were able to learn and take away with them. And even the women that talked on our panel, everybody was very complimentary about the different um, steps and things that they learned through that as well. So it was a huge success. And I think everybody very much enjoyed it. And we definitely had a great time putting it on. Yeah, it, it 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 was impressive. So, and I um, here at One Cause help put on our annual raise conference. So, conference person to conference person, great mm-hmm. job. And you know, to our audience that's listening, you just heard from Jessica, who's um, oversees all of the marketing and communications for um, women, uh, indie women in tech. Um, and that kind of reminded me that we didn't go around the room and kind of let you you 
talk about yourself a little bit and introduce yourself to the Raise Nation uh, audience. So why don't we take a step back to get ahead? And Jessica, do you just want to <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself, um, what you do for um, Indie Women in Tech, and just let our audience get to know you. And then we could um, talk to Ariel and Kristen as well. Sure. Um, I am Jessica McGinn. I work for Indie Women in Tech on the marketing and communications as well as social media side. Um, I got lucky with the team that I'm on. It's very collaborative and we work very well together in the sense that everybody takes lead on what their um, you know, title is, but we all work together to actually put on and um, work towards our fundraising goals, our events, everything that we do. But yeah. All right, Ariel, how about you? Hi, my name is Ariel Crawley. I'm over community engagement. I've been with IWIT directly and indirectly for about almost six years now. Wow. And I get to do with community engagement. I get to work with these two on a daily basis and be part of the trifecta. But I also um, get to work with our students and talk to them about what some of their needs are and making sure they're getting placed in jobs and getting the resources that they need to be successful. Wow. Okay, Kristen, how about you? Our audience wants to get to know you. Yes. Hello. Uh, my name is Kristen Russell, and I do plan all the different events uh, along with these lovely ladies for Indie Women in Tech. I've been with them for three years now. And um, we have a plethora of different events because we um, have events that you such as the one you just described, the Expo for professional development and for women, but we also do events for young girls to get them interested in STEM, to get them interested in um, pursuing a career that's related to tech or um, cemented in tech. And uh, so we run the gamut between um, uh, professional development programming to um, fundraisers. We have fun events such such as casino nights and golf. And um, uh, we just have a wide range of things that we plan, um, but it's all rooted in um, our mission, which is to get um, more girls and more women interested in tech careers and pursuing them right here in Indiana. Um, part of our background is that we realized in the state of Indiana that there was going to be a shortage of um of qualified candidates to fill the tech positions here. And so we wanted to get women involved because they are clearly un underrepresented. And so that is our mission and that's um, what all of our programming and events go towards. So um, the Indie Women in Tech is a nonprofit, is that right? Yeah, yes. that's correct. So it takes a lot of fundraising to support what you're doing. And I know that the um, Indie Expo I believe was no cost. Is that right? That is correct. Is, that is correct. Well, I mean, it was remarkable. I, um, as I mentioned, I'm involved in putting on conferences here at One Cause. So I recognize a good conference when I see one. And I did <laughs> sit sit in on the uh, personal branding and I was engaged the whole time. You had some pretty incredible speakers. Like I was front and center and like, taking pictures of the slides and, you know, <laughs> buying the book. And I was like, wow, I learned a couple of things here. So um, how, what does it take to put on such an incredible conference and, and not, not have a cost associated with it? It must take a, a tremendous amount of fundraising to, to put that out. How do you do it all? It, it does. Um, at the end of the day with this specific event, it was more along the lines of our sponsors that came through and really helped us um, put on the event that we were wanting to, as in free for our attendees, as well as all the volunteers that we had come and join us. So all of the workshop hosts were volunteers. Um, our panelists were volunteers. All of the booth hosts, resume building, professional headshots, all volunteers. So that didn't have a cost associated with it. So we're very lucky to work with some people that are also very passionate about our mission. For sure. I mean, it's an, it's so, it's so important. And I'd love to actually go off, completely off script here and ask the three of you, 
what's your why? Why why is this personally important, you know, to you? I mean, we get it, right? Um, Building women up to feel empowered, to pursue careers in in, in tech, STEM careers, STEAM careers, whatever um, you're going to call it, and, and boosting your communities and empowering women. But what does it personally mean to each to each of you to be part of this amazing organization and to bring so much programming and resources to, to women? What, what does it mean to each of you? Whoever wants to take that first. I'll go ahead and start. Um, I, one, do very much enjoy the fact that I work with all women for women. Um, That is a huge part of the motivator behind it for me. But as I've been working with Indie Women in Tech, I have realized that even though, um, you know, companies are working on diversifying their um, employees, there is a huge lack of women in leadership positions, especially in technology, where tech now hits every single industry, every department, every possible way of working within a workforce. And I think that our opinions and our knowledge and, you know, the biases that come along with it are very important to actually include women's views uh, because of the amount that tech does hit on. Hmm. Okay. Ariel, Kristen, anything to add to that about your personal why? I would say for me, it kind of checks all my boxes. I have a true passion for helping other people, in particular women and children. And then I've always just had a love of tech and STEM, um, even growing up as a kid. So to be able to combine all of that into one, I think speaks to the mission of IWIT. And it really just gets me up every morning. IWIT. I have to use that. IWIT. (laughs) Go ahead. I'm sorry. (laughs) you up in the morning. <laughs> it gets me up in the morning. And just knowing that you are a person that can help pivot someone's life for the better. We hear so many ladies who say, because of you, I was able to find my dream job. Because of your organization, I was able able to speak up for myself and get more money. Because of you, I was able to take the plunge and finally transition into tech. And now I'm in leadership at a tech organization. So knowing that you're a key for someone to do better, achieve more, make a difference within their own life and their own community, um, I, I couldn't ask for a better mission to be a part of. Gosh, it's, it's work for the soul, right? You're really yes. just speaking to your <laughs> speaking to your heart. Kristen, what about you? What's your personal why? Well, I'll, I'll give you a little bit different point of view because I'm the least technical person uh, on this uh, staff here. Um, so I don't have that strong background. Um, but what I do have and what does inspire me um, it, are seeing the faces of the young girls when um, you can tell that a light bulb is going off and they are, their eyes get big and they just realize maybe for the first time that this might be something that they're good at. And um, in a lot of cases uh, in the events that we've done with younger girls, they maybe haven't been encouraged um, in science and math and engineering and technology. Um, You know, maybe they have never considered being on the robotics team um, or, you know, even the college courses um, are mainly uh, represented by the male generation. So when you see that that happens, you know that it is most likely going to change their life for the better because we've seen that among our alumni Um, that they are able to go from hourly jobs to high paying tech jobs. And it's so it's not just about being in a successful career. It's about a better quality of life. Yeah. Wow. So tell us a little, whoever wants to take this, tell, why don't we tell our audience a little bit about 
um, the clients that you serve. And I'm going to use it. I wit, right. Is that what you said? I wit. <laughs> was that you that was in that? Yes, Ariel. Okay. So yes. indie, indie women in tech, mm-hmm. um, tell us a little bit more about the populations that you serve, the groups that you serve that, you know, you through adults, um, l- l- let's just d- define the, you know, client base, if you will, and, and why it's so important to them. I think we touched a little bit on that. We're really making, making life, helping them make life-changing decisions and empowering them to do that. But let's talk a little bit more about the programming and the people that you serve and the groups that you serve. I would say we get to, we have a distinct um, distinction here. We work with two different groups. So our first group is um, working within the K through 12 community. So um, girls that are in those populations that maybe are at schools that don't necessarily have um, strong STEM classes or maybe limited capacity for science or technology. So we get to work with those students. And one thing I think that helps us stick out from other organizations is you always hear you need to introduce girls to STEM in middle school or high school. I feel we go even further than that and introduce them K through five, because we really feel if you ignite that spark of, did you know Legos is a a pathway to engineering? Did you know, you know, an easy bake oven and kind of learning how those pieces work? That's part of science. That's part of tech. So being able to get that spark, but kind of look at it as a scientific way rather than just playing, I think it helps girls learn that initiative, take initiative, and really helps them move forward with that um, throughout their education uh, pathway. So we work with a number of middle schools and high schools in the Indianapolis and Indiana community. One thing I think that helps us stick out within that community is a partnership that we have with the organization called Tech Point uh, Foundation for Youth. They sponsor a statewide robotics competition. So we even get to see elementary girls, high school girls, middle school girls who are on a robotics team kicking butt and being able to say, okay, that's not working. Let's recode it this way. Um, I, I need my screwdriver stat. Can we, can we fix this? We're, ladies, we're going to be in competition. So even to oh, Kristen's point earlier, yeah. yes, <laughs> just, just yeah. seeing that and seeing those ladies get into those arenas and they get to compete at Lucas Oil. So who would not turn down? Like I'm competing where the Colts play. Like yeah. that's a very big piece. Cool. So I, um, I think for us being able to really work with the girls from the beginning until high school really helps and really pushes that initiative and gives them the confidence that they can do this moving on. And then personally, my favorite is the fact that this organization is dedicated to women, adult women, um, for some of our, um, academic programs and our scholar programs that we've had with our academic partner. Um, One of the things that sticks out for us is that we work with women anywhere from 18. The oldest uh, participant I think we've had was 66. She was retired. She had always been interested in tech, wasn't sure how that would work out for a person of her age, but she was like, I'm retiring. I don't feel like I should be retiring. I want a second career. And so she came, got with at us 66. at 66, okay. uh, taking Power. taking sure. courses at Ivy Tech. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe she was in the cybersecurity field and completed with a certificate and went on to find employment. So I think for us, just knowing that you don't have to be a, the traditional college student to go into tech. You don't have to be a young girl to get interested in STEM. You could think of us as your second, third, fourth career option. We are still going to help you out. We're still going to be invested in you. And we just really want all women who have interest to jump into STEM. So whether it's your first career choice or your nth degree um, career choice or whether you're five years old or 65 years old, (laughs) there's something for you at Indie Women in Tech. Is that what I heard? Yes. Okay. (laughs) 
All right. So we're speaking to all women, basically. Um, yes. <laughs> very cool. I, I, I love that. Um, so what what gaps then do 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 you bridge um, with all of your programming now that we know who you're serving? And gosh, it is just so important. Like, I get it, you know, like, let's have fun with those Legos. But let's think about those Legos a little bit differently, because you know what you you could you, you're you're empowering yourself right now. You're figuring it out. You're problem solving. You're <laughs> right to take that to the to the next level when you go to first grade and then take that to a bigger level when you get to second grade. So we're not hearing it for the first time in middle school. So I really love that. When you first said K to 12, I'm like, did she just say K? But now I'm getting it. Um, but what gap do you fill? What with what, you know, in, in the community, what is the gap that you're filling? I think we heard one gap. Some schools just are not up to the standard for STEM programs. Um, But what other gaps are there that we should be aware of? I think some of our other gaps are a little bit more of what we do on the adult side of our programming. So we have um, a scholar program at Ivy Tech Community College, which is based here in Indiana, statewide community college. Um, We have a program called Ivy Works. So with that program, we are able to provide 50% to 100% of tuition payment. We offer free professional development. We get them uh, matched with a mentor for free while they're completing the program. In addition to, we understand there's sometimes other barriers. It's not always tuition. It's not always the time. It could be... um, emergency assistance. I got a flat tire, but I'm already at the peak of my budget. We offer emergency funding. A lot of times when we talk to women, I would love to take a class, but either I can't afford daycare or I can't find quality daycare. Can you help us out? We provide child care assistance. So those ladies can take those classes. Um, a lot of times it comes in the summer. We, uh, Kristen and I are moms, so we kind of understand summer camp is a lot. <laughs> so we're happy as a program to come in and say, hey, you need to knock out two classes so you can graduate. Let us take care of that summer camp payment and we'll be oh able to help you out with that. So um, from a gap perspective, I feel like that is our strongest area with our adult programming. When it comes to our younger students, I would feel where we really come in and it speaks really to Jessica and Kristen and their hard work. Um, We get the ladies in front of people that look like them. So that might not be ladies. It could be uh, African-American woman. It could be an Indian woman. It could be a Chinese woman. It could be a younger woman, an older woman. So we really are um, very calculated, I would say, when we create different panels and things of that nature, especially when they're going to speak um, with our youth and through our youth programming, because we want to see, not necessarily look and say, all oh, these ladies are in tech, but they don't look anything like me. Is this possible? Or they're in tech, but they took the four-year route. I'm not sure. I'm in high school. I'm not sure if college is for me. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to um, afford that or my family could afford that. So we get ladies who look like our populations of students that we serve, but we also get ladies that come from different backgrounds. So they could say, hey, I got in a tech, but I went to a community college or, hey, I got in a tech. But guess what? I did a liberal arts degree. I had no idea what I was doing. I thought it would work out. I pivoted into a new career. So, hey, guess what, girls? What you might think you want to do now, you might not want to do later. And that's okay. Figure it out. So I think us providing that more personal gap so those uh, those girls really know you can explore, you can figure things out and still get support, but also still hear that guidance from people who might look like you and inspire you right not 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 immediately say okay that's nice you know I love your story they want to walk away from any of your program really feeling inspired like I can do that too and yeah that's that's a a wonderful perspective I I love hearing about that um so 
gosh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know where, what direction to go, to go into next. I mean, it's, it's all very exciting what you're doing, what you're doing for the community, but you do have other events. So I intend, I think it was with one of your partners, you put on the Empower Indie Expo, and that's the event that I got to go to, which again, Bravo is just wonderful, but you have other um, events. And um, can you tell us about them? Because I think our audience is listening and they're, they're you know, they're, they're, they're running to your website, which we're to our audience. We're going to have that all in the show notes, how to get in touch, where to find them, their events, all that good stuff. You can find it in the show notes and how to get in touch with our wonderful woman that we have on the show today. But what other events do you have? And you know, why, why, what's the why behind those? Who wants to take that? Is that, um, are you Kristen, the event planner? Are you there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the events that we are super excited about um, because we only do it every other year is the Iwit Summit. Uh, the Iwit Summit this year is going to be bigger and better than ever. Bigger, we better, and better, right? <laughs> Yes, that's right. <laughs> okay. Um, and it it is another uh, wonderful day of professional development. Um, as I said, it will be at Gamebridge Fieldhouse on August 30th. We have um, local speakers as well as national speakers come in to talk about the pulse of what is happening in tech right now, locally and um, on a national basis. Um, we have a another panel of wonderful uh, women. Um, and sometimes we have men on the panel too. We're not opposed to men being supportive and giving us uh, you know, their take on things. Um, but most likely will be another uh, panel of powerful women to talk about what is happening, how they rose to their positions, um, what people can do to transition to careers, how they can up their careers, and advance. Um, we uh, will have different interactive elements um, throughout the day as well. So it's really an event that you don't want to miss. Um, August we are 30th. Very excited. Yeah, August, August 30th, 30th at Gamebridge Fieldhouse. And um, tickets will be going on sale probably next month. And so we're very, very excited about that one. Uh, we also have a golf event. Um, that is a fundraising event. It is on June 18th at the uh, Brickyard Crossing Golf Course at IMS. So oh. um, for all of those uh People that either want to uh, just, you know, you don't have to be a professional golfer. You just want to need to want to come out and have fun. And you do get to play inside the track. So that's kind of fun. A lot of the um, several of the holes on the course are inside the track. So if they're practicing that day, you get to experience what it's like to be at IMS as well. Um, and uh, so, yeah, we have those two coming up and then um, we're working on some uh, more events for the fall. Um, which would be on the International Day of the Girl, which is October 11th. We're Ooh, going to do it. I have to mark with, my calendars. October 11th is the International. What what is it? What is October 11th? The International Day of the Girl is okay. October 11th, and we are going to host our first ever trivia night um, yeah. as a fundraiser. And so, um, yeah, so look for more details about that. I'm sure Jessica would love to, uh, you know, highlight how you can uh, follow us. Yeah, please. And we're going to have that all in the show notes too. But Jessica, let, yeah, I think, I guess not just how we can follow, but how can we get involved? So whether you're a volunteer or a, a donor or um, somebody who's inspired to maybe want to pursue tech, like how can we follow you? How can we get involved? Give us all that good stuff. Sure. Um, I do want to piggyback off of Kristen's real quick. Um, First of all, the CEO of One Cause has attended our Indie Women in Tech Summit before and has given us the biggest props of anybody who has ever complimented our summit. And so I do want to... Is that Steve Johns? Is that it the one is, and only Steve yes, Johns? Steve Johns. <laughs> he, it, he let us know that he, it opened up his mind. He learned so much and had no idea um, all the different kinds of barriers that women have faced in any kind of workforce, whether that be tech, science, non-for-profit, whatever it is. 
So that is a very great event, and we definitely want everybody to come out for that one. Um, as for the golf, we also include some LPGA players um, to come and kind of have a contest against some of our players, which is a really exciting um, aspect to it because we were the title sponsor for the LPGA through um, 2017 to 2019. And so we kind of bring in a few of them back as a legacy, which is a lot of fun. Um, and then for our futurist tech that she's talking about, we are having a trivia night. It is going to be a blast. It is going to be a little bit more casual than we normally have. So I'm hoping to have a full range of different um, participants, whether that's, you know, you're bringing your children, 12 year olds can come and participate as well, but it'll be a lot of fun. As for um, following and getting involved, there are many ways to get involved with us. Like uh, Don said, we offer a bunch of different opportunities to volunteer at every single one of our events. We do have sponsorships for every single one of our events, participation. Um, there are times that we will open up um, the possibility to even speak to our uh, students or maybe on our panel, um, many ways to get involved. And if you are ever interested and have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at my email, which is jessica.mcginn at group1001.com. And I will let you know all the different opportunities and where it would fit and align with you best. But as of now, most of our communication goes out through social media as well as our newsletter and our website, which I will have Don put in the notes. Yeah, well. we're going to have to get all of these calendar dates from you, Kristen, about the <laughs> events, because it's not just programming events, but it's fundraising events. I mean, how many fundraising yes. events do you need to run a year to support all of the wonderful programs that you put together? And, and that's not easy. I mean, you're that, that's just not easy. But how many fundraising events do you have annually? Um, we definitely have two. Sometimes uh, we will add another one on top of that. Um, but our golf is a staple and as well as the Futurist Tech event, which kind of changes from year to year. Last year, it was a casino night. Um, it's been a gala. And this year, we're doing a trivia night. So um, Mixing it up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we like to change things up keep thing keep things interesting um but we uh, also have been fortunate that we've had um not only is the, the support of some sponsors but we've also had um some grants that have been awarded to us and all of that helps tremendously um with our mission and providing the services that we do wow um so being pro tech do you use technology to support your fundraising events as well? I got to ask that question. <laughs> we have oh. been fortunate enough that One Cause has been a massive um, platform that we have been able to utilize and that you guys have given us the opportunity to utilize. And so I have actually been working with One Cause and using your platform now for about three years. And I would say... 90% of our events are used through One Cause, and it is tremendous. I I love using One Cause, and I love working with every single one of your employees. Well, thank you for saying that. I was surprised when, um, you know, I was in Indy for Steve John's book launch, um, and I... Uh, Happened to chat with you, Jessica, and um, some of the other folks over at, um, I'm getting used to saying IWIT. Um, so, um, and then that's when I learned about the expo and we were chatting at one of the events. And I'm like, wait a minute, I'm in Indy, I can come. And so somebody sent me a link real fast and I was like, oh, wow, that's the One Cause technology. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. So um, we're glad that you're using um, the software to further your missions. And it's such a great mission. And and um, makes us proud for sure. And it's interesting because Steve John's chief product uh, officer is a woman, Stephanie Ragazzino. And I know she's a big proponent of mentorship and um, she really leads the charge here with um, developing just innovative solutions to help nonprofits just 
reimagine giving and unlock generosity. So use the product to the fullest um, <laughs> to, to get what you need out of it, because that makes us, you know, super, super, super duper proud. So um, that's all good stuff. Okay. So um learning more we're going to put that all in in the show notes and how to get in touch with each of you and and all that good stuff what else do you want the community to know um about indie women in tech i i think we have a couple more minutes that we can go round robin and touch on touch on what what else, what would you want the community to know if there is one thing that you can tell them i feel like we can talk another 2 hours <laughs> with everything that you guys are doing but if you had to pick one thing or one favorite what would you want the community to know whoever wants to go first but i want each of you to answer that I would say our organization, Indie Women in Tech, really speaks to the heart of Indianapolis. Um, we're such a welcoming organization, such a welcoming environment. And I know a lot of times, too, you hear so much about STEM and there's so much being done, but uh I would really understand it's a long haul <laughs> that we are working on. Um, even with all the work that we do, even with the mission, we're still at 27% uh, female representation within tech. Even with all that we're hearing um, right now with some of these large organizations that are laying off, we represent such a small population of the tech community, yet we're getting laid off at 40%, 46% with in that community. So even though you hear so much about get more women in tech, get more women in STEM, there's still a lot of work to do. And I feel that's what I would feel um, what we are. We speak to the heart of the mission, but we're also here for the long haul to make sure we can increase those numbers. Yeah, I hear your heart every time you speak. I mean, your passion, your heart. Um, so I'm not surprised that that you said that. But uh, let's let's hear from the other two as we wrap <laughs> up. Just what what's your favorite thing, or what do you want the community to know? Well, I would say that um, we are always looking to expand our base of supporters. Um, we are small, but we are mighty. <laughs> but um, if you are a listener out there and you can volunteer your time, you can make a donation, you can become a sponsor, um, or you can even provide um, some uh, some sort of a prize or swag item um, that we could utilize, we will do it. <laughs> we, we I saw that at the expo for sure. You had everything <laughs> yeah. going on there. Yes, we appreciate um, just anyone who is willing to come on board with us and uh, get behind us and, and provide that support. So um, even just attending our events, that's a huge support. Um, the more people that we can introduce to what we're trying to do and our mission, um, the more that we're able to accomplish for these girls and these women. And um, that, that's the bottom line is just having the resources to be able to provide the scholarships, put on the events that um, make a difference in these lives. Wow. Jessica, do you want to take us home? Yeah, I am. I'm going to piggyback a little bit off of Kristen in the sense that if you at all want to be involved in any kind of way, we want you there. We want you to be involved. We want you to help in any kind of way. And it doesn't matter if it's funding it or possibly your time or effort or whatever expertise that you have. We would love to see you involved with us. And again, expand our supporter base in every single category. Well, I know big shout out to Kelly Alford, who works at um, One Cause and works closely with Steve Johns, our CEO. She is just a champion of the work that um, you're doing and inspired me, you know, to, to attend the expo. So I'll make this commitment to you as we kind of wrap up the show here. I am not an indie often, but of course I work for, you know, I, I live in New Jersey. Most of our audience knows that, but um, I do come into indie every now and again for for, you know, different meetings, I'll commit to you that whenever I'm there, I'm going to raise my hand and say, hey, these are the days that I'm traveling, put me to work. <laughs> and please make me do something because I saw firsthand what a great organization it is. You are heart and soul of what you're doing. And the passion is 
amazing. And there's just so much more to talk about. The story is going to continue. We're going to have to have you all back on the show a year from now, just to talk about progress or, or maybe not and, and how we can make, you know, progress happen. So promise me that we'll stay in touch and we'll do this again, maybe a year from now. Absolutely. Yeah, that would be cool. All right. So we're going to get some show notes. We're going to get contact information. We're going to get calendars and we're going to get all that good information. And as your event sites become available, I can always update it. So if you're out there, Indy, uh, you want to get involved, you need help, you, you're, you're just looking for something, uh, whether you're a supporter or a volunteer or wanting to pursue a career in technology, stay in touch with IWIT, Indy Women in Tech. Um, Fearless Fundraisers, that's about all we have time for today today. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed today's Raise Nation topic, your daily dose of fundraising inspiration. Please tune in for a new episode release every Thursday at 12.30 p.m. That's Thursdays, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time, all your new episodes. In the meantime, listen to the, to the station that you like best. We stream on all the favorite podcast cha- channels. So follow us so that you can get notifications about new guests. You know, all the fundraisers out there are doing amazing things. I invite you to join me on the show so we can cast some shine on your mission and tell your story. Your stories are awe-inspiring and you'll hear them here on Raise Nation Radio. You don't want to miss a single episode. I would like to thank our sponsor, One Cause, for making this show possible. One Cause is driving the future of fundraising with easy-to-use software solutions that help nonprofits connect with their donors. Check it out at onecause.com and visit the resource tab on the homepage for a broad catalog of eBooks that you'll find very helpful. Huge shout out and thank to my panel of uh, guests from Iowa Indie Women in Tech just for sharing so much more. I really had no idea the powerhouse that you are and what you're doing for the communities. Um, to Jessica and Ariel and Kristen, thank you from Indie Women in Tech. Thank you so much for being with us. I tr- t- truly enjoyed our conversation. It was very inspiring to me. You're all very inspiring. So I'm going to have to ask you one at a time, any last words of inspiration for our audience? Who's going to jump in first? You know, I would say my biggest motivational inspiration is the saying, kindness both to yourself and others is synonymous with happiness. I love that. Okay, we're going to get that one in the show notes too. <laughs> I love that. You just you just made my, my week, my day, my month. Okay, Ariel and Kristen, what do you have for last words of inspiration? Um, I'm going to go with uh, Women's History Month since we're in March. Yes. Uh, Margaret Thatcher said, if you want something said, ask a man. If you want something done, ask a woman. Ooh, <laughs> I like that. We're casting a little shade there, but yeah, I love that. <laughs> That's right. We are doers. Okay, Kristen, take us home. What's the inspiration? Um, well, I like to say we have a we have a special event called Ignite Your Superpower. Ooh. And I like to say uh take it one step further and use your superpower for good. Ignite your superpower and use it for good. I love all of that. You really are just such inspiring women. Thank you for being on the show. Really enjoyed having you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'll see you at your next event. Um, Raise Nation audience, until the next time, I'm Don Lego. This is Raise Nation Radio. You stay fearless out there. 